First, I want to thank all the organizers and especially the family for providing our entire community with a chance to re-experience our fondest memories of uh, our dear Professor Tashomi Gabriel. I'd like to share with everyone a few of my dearest recollections. My name is Dennis Lowe, and um, I had the pleasure of being TA, uh, a TA for Tashomi's film and social change. The first time I met him, I was visiting UCLA roughly a year and a half ago. A number of CMS students were giving me and another admit a tour of the campus when I found a man in the tweed jacket and flat cap with light puffs of smoke floating behind, chatting intently with a staff member as if sharing the latest wisdom on dealing with their children's misadventures. Truth be told, I was more impressed at the time with the juxtaposition between their huddled figures and the most eclectic row of vending machines I had ever seen placed in a single spot. But when our troop shouted out to him, we were returned with the warmest smile and most genuine laugh I had heard since driving down to LA. As I continued walking to Northern Lights, a, near, a nearby cafe, I learned that this was the famed Toshome Gabriel, the star who appeared in almost every one of my undergraduate classes on national and third cinemas and I stumbled upon this canonical deity here? This is only the tip of the iceberg. Even after taking two of his graduate seminars, the eclecticism of his pedagogy still remained truly baffling. To my chagrin, he did not utter the word hybridity or allegory, even a single time in some of our conversations. Instead, I surmise that he often spoke in parables, ranging from the poetic mysticism of stones to the wayfinding principles of Middle Eastern desert nomads. What did these have anything to do with post-colonial theory? This only became marginally clear when I had the pleasure of TAing for him, where he continued to lecture as intimately and profoundly as he had always spoken to me in front of those strange vending machines. This time, I was far less resistant as I felt reassured that I had heard these parables at least once and couldn't be further confused. In fact, I had come to love and adore his stories, almost in direct proportion to how much they made me realize that I did not understand. Outside of the lecture hall, I looked forward to meeting him on a weekly basis to revise the study list of my concentration and took comfort in trusting that our friendship would grow in the years to come. He passed away not too long after I had passed my study list defense. The next time I heard the familiar ring of a few of those stories, I found in the books of the study list we had crafted together. Naturally, it was not without difficulty that I began to study this concentration. Yet the more I read, the more I discovered that post-colonial theory is nothing more and nothing less than a set of observations on the deeply human, ethical, and moral dilemmas that we commonly face as intellectuals. Jargon aside, everything I needed to understand from post-colonial theory had in fact already been encapsulated in the very parables Tashome had shared with me, and how profound a set of theories they constituted, precisely because they were lived out through example rather than in reference as an academic canon. To this day, I continue to draw hope, inspiration, and meaning from my dear, dear friend, just as I have when I found it difficult to trudge through the study list. As Toshome once remarked with a rather rare hint of solemnness, when a great teacher passes, it is as if an entire library has burnt to the ground. Call me bold, Toshome, but maybe you're wrong just this one time. I'd like to think that your fire continues to keep our library alive and strong in this and the generations to come. Thank you.